So listen, we've heard a lot from reading the observer over the years about how, uh, Hogan was a, um, a master gamesman, a master politician, whatever you want to call him. And I'm curious from your perspective, when it's written here that there was a lot of, uh, opposition to Vince bringing back Hogan. Do you remember who was against this? Was it, would this have been something where you raised your hand and said, boss, do you really want to do this? We just had this issue a few months ago. Well, a, a lot of, uh, top guys were not interested in it because they knew that it was going to create competition for that spot. Right. Or those spots. And there's, and there's, there's not enough spots to go around, uh, to cover everybody's bases and needs and so forth. Uh, I, I'd tell talent. I told talent. I remember telling some talents. Why are you worried about it? Right. He's an older guy with multiple back surgeries. He's very limited on what he can do physically. So I don't understand your, your, your angst. I don't understand your paranoia. It sounds like you're worried about competition. Right. And I, and knowing your abilities, talking to the talent, I don't know what you got to worry about. Let's go do your thing. Go do your thing. And, and, uh, and have the best match you can possibly have. And then uh, stick your chest out and you walk back through the grill positions and say something to the effect of follow that voice, follow that. So, uh, you know, I, I had no issues. I just, I wanted whatever was going to be good for the company to enhance my paycheck. I'm generally for, <laughs> well, I think that's a healthy way to live. Um, we know that ultimately. Hulk is back and it comes at a SmackDown taping on January 21st in Albany. And he gets an eight minute standing ovation. And of course here in storyline, it's that Stephanie has signed Hogan to a WWE contract against the wishes of her father, Vince McMahon. Eventually Vince comes out and talks about how disappointed he is in Stephanie saying that as far as he's concerned, Hulk Hogan is as dead as Al Wilson which has recently been a whole storyline here on the show. And Hogan is going to ask the fans, who do you think I want in the ring? And then he decks Vince McMahon to close the show. So we clearly know the direction we're headed. And let's just remind everybody that a year prior, Hogan made a comeback to the WWE at no way out 2002 with the NWO. And that set up rock and Hogan. So we're going from rock and Hogan at 18 and 2002 to now Hogan and Vince. Is this something that you were a fan of the idea of Vince and Hogan in a match? I had no problem with it whatsoever. To be honest with you, I think it was something the fans wanted to see. Uh, they've been, you know, Vince is bad mouth, Hogan, Hogan, a bad mouth Vince and all this stuff have grown. And now we're, we're, we're getting more into the social media age where information is being dis, dis, uh, you know, established and distributed in a very unique way. I, I just don't, it, it wasn't going to be the main event. It was never going to be the main event, even though it, I thought it had great interest, but, uh, it's just the paranoia of wrestlers and actors and singers. Any, any entertainment type person is looking for that next hit and the promoters are looking for that next big payday. And I, and I know that uh, this pay-per-view did well and, and Vince and everybody involved made it, made some good money because I did the payoffs and that's not because of me, right? The, the money was there. It's that it's I always looked at the payroll, like a big pie. There you go. And the bigger, the pie that is baked, the better off you are. 